Hello everyone, it is Tuesday, August 21st, and it is blog day here at the Undead Viking Video Studios. Undead Viking Videos Studios. That's awful. I'll come up with something new. Um, so this is the second blog I do. This is the uh, role-playing game blog. Um, so uh, just catching up to date as far as a few of the different role-playing game things going on in my life. Uh, I am still currently playing in my campaign. Uh, my bard is still alive. Uh, our last session, uh, which I think... I think... I think I, I'm trying to remember the last time I did like if I had a session after the last time I did a vlog, but I haven't. So we're still in a holding pattern right now. We have tracked down uh, the big bad guy that we're supposed to bring to justice to the queen, which is also like the head of this church, who is also the, the walking, living avatar of the person that walks the earth, kind of thing. And then also the same room that we tracked that person down to, uh, his name is Hartha. He in the room with uh, this giant bloated human being, which is the, like, uh, uh, Urish of the, 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 the seven-fingered, and he is, um, like, the person who wants my character dead, and we've just, literally just walked into the room, and these people have seen us, and so we're, we're right on the cusp of a huge battle. So, um, but as I said, currently I am still alive. I am the only uh, original character uh, from the very first time we played, and I think we started playing about a year ago now. Um, and mind you, again, uh, I want to say this, it's, it's a year ago that we started playing, and we play like every other week normally, and uh, my character is fourth level. <laughs> So, just keep that in mind. This is a very low-powered, very slow-moving, gradual campaign. And I give all the credit in the world to uh, my friend Jason for running it. He has listened to our pleas of mercy of wanting to see our characters level up and resoundingly uh, dismiss them and, and uh, has, has carried on. And, but he's maintained our interest in the campaign and maintained our love of the campaign. So, um... That, that's a credit to him, right? Because usually people want to level, right? They want to they want to get the new shiny. Oh, I want to have this attribute point, or oh, I want this new spell, or I want this new feat, or you know whatever the leveling system is uh, in your world. Like um, our campaign is, we play a um, we play a uh, kind of a, a our own system, a system that we created um, ourselves uh, back in high school, and here we are about. 30 years later, uh, we're still playing the system. It's definitely changed and altered. I mean, for a while, it was like a D100 system for a while. I mean, we definitely, like, altered it and changed it and, and, and did a lot a lot of working with it. Now, it most resembles, in my opinion, a combination of, uh, like, a lot of first edition feel with some, like third edition, not feats, mind you, like third edition, um, hmm, how do I put this, like third edition, like, improvements, I guess. So, like, my bard, like, uh, like, we have what's called, um, basic abilities, uh, expert abilities, and master abilities. And so, like, you have to get to, I think, level five or six before you get to expert abilities, and you have to get to level ten to see master abilities, which none of us are going to see. But, like, basic abilities are like my bard can I can decide I can sing one more song in a day normally I'm, I'm limited to the number of songs per level but I can sing an extra song or um, like uh, I can I took a skill I took one ability that like uh, applies for any of my charm or sleep effects like basically the, what what bards are known for doing um, I, I, I gave an extra minus one to the person's uh, saving throw yeah, so stuff like that. Like, they aren't game-changing or anything like that. They don't, like, it isn't, like, power attack or anything like a feat like that, like you'd find in, like, Pathfinder. Uh, but it is something that just slightly improves your character a little bit. So that's kind of like the cherries that you get to drop on top of your character after you get your hit points, after you get your skill ranks, things like that. Um, so, uh, that's where I'm at as far as that is concerned with the RPG. I have, um, I've almost finished 
uh, reading. God, I'm probably going to finish reading this today at my kid's Taekwondo class. I've almost finished reading Sword of the Crown Unspeakable Power, and then I will um, probably uh, do my review later this week. Um, uh, it's still fantastic, still really good. I invite you to check that out. Uh, the other kind of old school thing that I wanted to actually show you and mention, I think I mentioned this before in other RPG blogs, but if you are um, a dungeon crawl, mega dungeon like l fan or 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 uh, just love really good um, things to to throw your characters into. And admittedly, this what I'm going to show you. This is you could easily convert this to fifth edition D and D. It wouldn't be very difficult at all. Um, uh, I think you'd have a little more trouble going, going Pathfinder or fourth edition, um, which I don't know. I mean, with Pathfinder two coming out, I'm sure there's still lots of old school Pathfinder players. But this is it definitely it's it's made. Um, uh, for Labyrinth Lord, which is an, uh, a first edition old school uh, clone type of thing, uh, but you can, like I said, you, you can you can pretty much um, uh, transfer over. But anyway, this is uh, Stonehill. Uh, you know, this is uh, Down Night Haunted Halls is like the first book, and this is Stonehill Dungeon. Uh, you know, what is it? Uh, yeah, Into the Heart of Hell. Um, these two books combined. I wish they would just. You know, I mean, I've read these two so many times. I wish they'd just get like a hardcover. Um, you you got to go print-on-demand with these. I think I went through Lulu Press to get these. Somebody had mentioned that they were really, really good. Um, these are uh, fantastic. Uh, and I, and I, and I, this, these came out a while ago, too. I'm not, I'm not telling anyone anything that they haven't already heard, if you know of these. But if you are a dungeon crawl, like, person. Like, you want to put your characters in some giant dungeon they got to crawl through and try to find uh, the secrets to. Um, these are, uh, like, this This is, like, the first, like, four levels, and this is, like, the last three levels of the dungeon. And, um, there's also some download, like, free download, download, like, like the wilderness around, but you can find those easily enough. Um, I strongly suggest picking these up. Uh, the reason I'm just mentioning this is that like, currently I am running uh, my, uh, my my Taste of Mystical Games uh, buddies and my daughter, for that matter. We're going; they're going through this dungeon and they're having fun uh, tracking stuff down. Um, the cool thing about this is it 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 is it it gives you a really really good overview of each level of the dungeon, and then kind of allows the the DM, the, the the ability to kind of add the flavor, if you will, but but without like the DM can't screw it up. I mean, well, I guess you could screw it up, but what I mean is, is that they have like okay, so here I'll just show you. Um, so they they have a level three master map. So like you see this big giant map like this, and that is like level three. And you'll notice that each one of these is kind of into a little quadrant. Now that's one thing that I don't really like about it because. It seems like they're artificially splintered up, right? It kind of just looks like each each side is a quarter, but you get over it. Um, so each one of those then has its own chapter because there'll be like 3A, 3B, and so on and so forth. Oh, and then over here it gives like a complete list of the monsters and all their stats that you're gonna have. Really like basic overview stats, like you'd have to go and like um, like get out your books, to like your monster manuals and things like that. But like as far as the, their hit points the attacks, the amount of damage, that kind of thing. And then they just kind of go through and they tell you, this is level 3A, the monster dorm, right? And it just kind of tells you everything that's going on. It tells you if there's any weird magical items, it tells you if there's any special, like, things going on in the rooms or anything like that. And then, like, here's level 3A, it splinters that off, and then in two pages, it actually has everything you need to run that area. So it'll just say, like, here's, like, room number 10. So you'll move room number 10, just says Dwarven Barracks, it's a dwarf-sized stone bunks, a wrestling circle marked on the floor, it has dirty drinking horns on the walls, and it is empty. That's it. But but you as the DM could say, okay, you open up the room, uh, you see several bunks set up, they're made out of stone, they look, about, they look like the size for dwarves. Uh, you see that like somebody has taken a time to like carve a circle into the middle of the room. Now you just leave it like that, right? You just say that and that alone. People are going, oh, what's the circle? And they're going to kind of look and see what, what they think it is. And, you know, oh, is it like a spell circle? Is it like, a, you know, some sort of magical thing? They're going to waste a lot of time doing it. But once again, you're giving, I've said this in other RPG blogs, but you're giving the world uh, verisimilitude. It, make, it makes it sound like, and it feel like it's something real, something that they're interacting with. But 
Anyway, I, uh, and then that's what, and then the drinking horns. And so it's like, oh, so they can spend some time. Maybe they're going to take, oh, I'm going to take one of those dwarven drinking horns. You know, maybe even make them worth something. Make them be an antique. Make them be, be something that, like, they can take back and uh, they see an engraving on it. The DM is allowed to kind of mess with the world and kind of change things up and make it interesting. And so it, that's, but that's all it is. It isn't like it's like, oh, here's a big long story. Here's three paragraphs. Here's that little box paragraph that you need to read out loud to the players to describe that thing. No, it doesn't do that but it and so it allows the dm to kind of make the world their own so here's one where it says uh like knoll barracks it has mangy bedrolls and old mixed match furnishings and then it says knolls six of them uh each of them have 1d10 electrum pieces and 1d8 gold pieces each so now knolls you know what they are you open the door you see the hyena like humanoids they say you know if, if depending upon how the players have been handling those guys the whole thing, are they going to attack immediately are they going to talk to them that sort of thing right but that's all you need you don't need like a big giant <laughs> verbose description and that's why you can have tons of little levels of a dungeon in these two little books and i think these cost me like 20 bucks a piece it was like next to nothing but anyway so, uh, strongly suggest, and also, I should mention that because each one of these, um, like, dungeons has, like, its own, like, little map like that, you could easily just take those dungeons and transport them into something else. It doesn't have to be part of this giant story. You could just use it for whatever. And as always, like, a good DM is always stealing things from other sources that they've read. And so this is a really, really good resource for that. So, there you go. Uh, as always, uh, tell me what RPGs you, you're currently playing. Tell me uh, how those things are going. Um, if there's any, like, weird, out-of-the-way RPGs you think I don't know of, or any Kickstarters that I, maybe I should check out and back, um, please do so. Uh, let me know. I know the, depending on how you watch this, I know like the Expanse RPG, which is based on the Fantasy Age system, which is a system I like. I need to, I need to play it one of these days. I haven't played it yet, but I do like that system. I mean, I, I, I don't know how, how much I care about the Expanse. I mean, I like the show. I read the couple of the books. I think it's okay. Um, I think it's one of those things where it's like, huh, should I back that? Uh, I don't know. You know, I just, um, I don't think I'll end up backing it, honestly. I just don't, I, I can't, you know, I, I just don't see the point of dropping 60, 80 bucks on a system that I'm not going to play. Because I just know I, I won't play it. So, um, but, um, if I'm wrong, let me know. And I do know that that Kickstarter is going on right now, so you can go ahead and check that out. But, all right, uh, thank you very much. As I said, uh, uh, look for an extended review of Sword Crown of Unspeakable Power relatively soon, as soon as I can track down the time and finish that reading that book. Uh, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch uh, the, the blog day uh, video post, and until next time, I'm the Edna Viking, telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. Alright, bye-bye.